Praise the Lord. <laughs> I was uh, kind of thrilled to see the sunlight beginning to stream through, although I get up in the dark, you know, and work in the dark and do a lot of things and getting things ready for ministry, but when the sun actually comes over the mountain and uh, we have the, being in Sacramento, we have the uh, Sierra kind of up by Lake Tahoe and all that stuff, you know, the mountains there that once the sun comes over the edge of it, it kind of streams all the way across the entire Central Valley of California. Actually, from that angle, it probably streams all the way to San Francisco, <laughs> which means all the way across California. Because it's pretty high up over there, about 7,000 feet up. So once it gets over that edge, whoo, whew, kind of bright. And it's nice to see after the rain. You know, I kind of enjoy that. But you know, I was thinking about that today. I was thinking, as I looked at that light, you know, that I could either look at that in a positive way or a negative way. I could either enjoy it, or I could treat it like, oh man, I better put on some sunblock because I have precancerous skin, you know, problems, or I have skin that, you know, is going to get, you know, kind of like easily affected by rays of the sunshine and radiation and maybe cause skin cancer. So I could think about that and worry about skin cancer. Or I could worry about the water I'm drinking. Or I could be consumed with all the worries and cares of this world today and start off my day by going, man, you know, I better hurry up and get ready. I'm running out of time. It's Friday and I got to get, get my work done so that, by golly, I'm enjoying Friday and that's because the work week's over. For some. <laughs> so I could get all wrapped up into that by choice, you know. That's my choice. By choice, I decided, you know, to be a born again Christian. You know, I didn't really have to. There was nothing that said you have to become born again. There's nothing that said you have to be a Christian. As a matter of fact, you don't have to go to heaven. You can go to hell if you want to. And in fact, most people will, frankly, bluntly, go to hell. But that's their choice. You see, I can present to you the options. I can give you the freedom of choice, which you have, because God gave you the freedom of choice. He said, look, I made you, but hey, you know, you want to rebel, fine, go for it, go to hell, see if I care. I've already given you my son, so I do care, but that's it. I sent you my prophets, I sent you my word, I sent you my teachers, I sent you all these people. I even gave you my people, you know, to use as an example, and then I sent you my son, what more do you want? I've given you everything. So now, if you really want to go to hell, go to hell. <laughs> Didn't expect that, huh? No, really. It's your choice. You see, everything in your life, every day, as you begin your day, is a choice. It's a matter of a differentiation, we call it. Deciding which way you will go to the left, to the right, up or down, to sit still, to stand still, to sit down, to stand up, to go forward, to go back, to move in your understanding or to become kind of like, you know, less smart, you know, and become more like complacent and kind of lackadaisical because that is a choice also to either do something about what your present life circumstances are or to live in them. You see, I had this poem I wrote way back when, when I was going through intense, miserable suffering. I mean, I was going through stuff where they would give me shots of morphine and it didn't dull the pain at all. I mean, it was really agonizing, you know. I mean, it was just some really crazy stuff that would drive people, you know, insane, you know. And, and I remember writing in my journal at the time, I called my journal Exposition of a Human Being, and it kind of exposed what a human being is like because Maybe God inspired it, maybe it was me realizing that in the future I would look back on this, but anyways, the point being is that I wrote down this poem, and uh, it said, if you really want to be miserable, not only can you, you are. And it's kind of a free verse poem, but it fits, because you see, you make the choice of how to respond to the circumstances of your life. You can take your trials and tribulations, no matter what they are, 
So don't come to me and tell me, you know, well, oh, it's so miserable, my life. You know, you don't understand. You know, I lost a wife or I lost a child or I lost this or I lost that. No, I do understand. And I have compassion upon you. But it's still your choice. Oh, but you don't understand. I'm suffering with an incurable disease. It's killing me. I've just been told I only have three days to live. Oh, yes, I do understand. And I have compassion upon you. But it's still your choice. You see, your choice how to react to something is up to you. You are going to exist forever. Sorry. I don't mean to wipe out your perspective on what you think this life is about. But you have a spirit inside that's going to continue on beyond your physical body. You are not going to go into the oh cosmos and just kind of filter out into the nether of the world, you know, and suddenly be a non-entity. God doesn't work that way. He creates things because he wants to keep them around. And he keeps some things around kind of as a lesson. And he keeps some things around, you know, in order to bless them. So you're either a lesson or a bless them. You know what I said? You're either going to be kind of like used as kind of like, don't go where he went. He went to hell. Ouch! Or you're blessed. You're kind of going, man, go where he went because he knows me. Oh, so I could choose either way to go. And it's not just dual ways because sometimes, you know, there's other ways to choose. You know, some people choose, well, I'm not going to make a decision today. Well, that's a choice. Good luck. Last I heard, somebody dropped dead the other day, you know. And they didn't see it coming and nobody else did either. Wow. I hope they were prepared. Because <laughs> if they were, they just stepped out of physical reality into spiritual reality. And that's kind of the choice you have. You see, you could ignore the spiritual reality of life. You could. You could go along acting like there's no such thing as a spiritual reality. Unfortunately, even people who aren't Christians are beginning to recognize there is something out there, some spiritual reality that we don't seem to understand, and it seems to be measurable in math and sciences, and now we're beginning to get all kinds of things to point towards the dimensionality of the spirit, You know, meaning that there's something more to life than just Oh, a bunch of neurons, you know, in your brain connecting, you know, and sparking back and forth, and that's creating thought. Good. How did it create emotion? Oh, that was just more neurons creating this kind of a... Sure, go ahead and keep explaining it. Then make a robot with emotion. <laughs> well, we will, you know. Uh-huh, sure you will. Go ahead. <laughs> Good luck. Man always tries to make God into his own image. <laughs> oh, boy. But every day you're alive, you get the opportunity to choose which way you'll go. Will you rejoice in the day that the Lord has made, or will you reject the fact that God made today? You see, if you accept the fact that God made today, then you can rejoice in it, because if you are operating with Him, then you can go forward acknowledging Him and trusting in Him, and He'll direct your path. But if you don't acknowledge the fact that this is the day God has made, and if you just kind of look at it as, well, you know, it's always going to happen. The day's going to start, you know, and this is going to happen like, you know, the sun rises and the sun sets and the rain falls, you know, and it comes on the good and the wicked. Yeah, it does. Matter of fact, that's what God said. Did you know that? Ooh, wow. Maybe God knew what he was talking about. But your reaction to the day or your interaction with the day is up to you. You can't acknowledge the sun's rising right now. You can look out there and say, hey, you know what? The sun's rising. I see the light. And so you begin to become aware that there is such a thing as light. Well, that's kind of like if you don't know God, the same thing is true. Or if you haven't heard God's voice, the same thing is true. You begin to acknowledge certain things are beginning to connect. The dots are beginning to kind of like go one to two to three to four, and you trace them, and you begin to go, Okay, well, I'm tracing the dots. I'm going from step one to step two to step three to step four, just like they told me in the Bible, to step five to step six to step seven, just like my church has been telling me, to step eight to step nine to step ten. And you're kind of going along, you know, tracing this line that kind of goes all over the place, and you can't figure out what you're doing. And then suddenly you go, oh, wait a minute. Let me step back and look at this. And suddenly 
tracing that line, that pathway of your life, you begin to say, hey, look, all those dots connected make a picture. <gasps> I'm beginning to see the picture. I'm getting the big picture. Begin to understand? You don't know what's going on, but somebody else does because he's got all the dots. Somebody had to make the dots there for you to trace them. You had to walk along a certain path in order to kind of like discover that there were steps you were supposed to go. And no matter whether you went off step or in step or out of step, you still went from dot to dot to dot because God already knew what you were going to do. Ooh, he's sneaky that way. Yep, that's why he put the sun out there. That's why he's got it rising and setting just like he said it would. As long as the sun rises and the sun sets, as long as the rain shines, or the rain shines, as long as the rain falls and the sun shines, God's promises, God's word would be true and God would still be there for you. So you could ignore this sunlight out there. You could ignore connecting the dots. You could ignore the big picture, but you know what? It's still going to happen. Ignoring the sun don't make it go away. Neither does ignoring the fact that you were the one who made your bed and now you're sleeping in it. You're the one who's made your choices. You are the one who's decided what you will do today. Now, I like to give that decision-making process away. <laughs> I don't like to make decisions. I'd rather be told what to do, you know, because I'm kind of like, you know what? I've made my decisions. Man! Anybody smell anything around here? <laughs> That's kind of my decisions, you know. When I make my own decisions, something stinks. <laughs> something, when I make my own choice, is wrong. Unless I start my first choice with, I think I'll get God's attention and say, uh, Lord, <laughs> are you up there? Are you in here? Are you speaking to me? What are you doing today? I want to do what you're doing. I want to go where you're going. I want to follow you. I don't care what it costs, Lord. I don't care what the price is. I don't care if I'm miserable right now. I'm choosing to follow you because I think if I keep with you, you'll take care of me. I think if I stick with you, you'll bless me. I think if I decide today to be your child as a father, you'll provide for me and keep your angels around about me, protecting me from all these other things that everybody else seems to have to go out and fight, you know, with guns and bayonets and wars and battles and do all these weird things, you know, but as a child of God, God, I just ask you to do it and I just say, hey, Lord, you know, can you make me like Elijah? Could you make me like Elisha? You know, you know Elisha, Lord, you know, the guy that was laying on the bed, you know, and kept saying, well, you know, I'm a man of God, so I'll tell you what, Lord, you wipe them out. I don't need to get up. Boom, they wiped out. Wow. If Elisha could do it, could you? Hmm. Maybe I ought to go out and get a clock, a Glock. Or maybe I ought to get a 357 Magnum. Or maybe I ought to stockpile food for myself so that I'll have plenty of food just in case, you know, the end of the world comes. Maybe I'll be a preppy or a prepper. Maybe I'll be a Elisha and trust in the Lord with all my heart. Maybe I'll choose to be like Elisha and just kind of like, yeah, you know, I used to worry about those things, you know. I kind of like was fearful, you know, and kind of was panic-stricken, and I kept thinking, Lord, what about this famine that's coming? You know, what about that? What am I going to do about the famine? Lord, what am I going to do about the flood, you know? Lord, there's a tornado. What am I going to do about the tornado? And you know, God wasn't in the famine, and he wasn't in the flood, and he wasn't in the tornado, but after it all passed, he said, I took care of you, didn't I? I guess I'm still here. I guess you did. I'll always take care of you. Oh. Oh. You will? Huh. So what am I worried about? I don't know. What do you worry about today? That's my question. What's your choice? Do you really think that you have the choice to do anything you want to do? You do. <laughs> Frankly, you can go back to bed. But 
if you got a job and you go back to bed and don't show up for work, you're liable to get fired. Because you see, you have consequences to that choice you made. You can make the choice, that's your freedom. But your freedom has not a price, but a consequence. You see, there's consequences. You can choose to do whatever you want to do, but if you don't do what God wants you to do today, are you like in rebellion? Do you think so? Because I think God said, this is the day that I have made. I think God made a day today for you, and he wants you to get involved in it if you choose to be a part with him. Otherwise, maybe today, if you're going your own way and you haven't spent time with him, and you haven't talked to him about his way and doing it what he wants, like, you know, God's will be done, then I think you're in rebellion in that. Uh, can I stand aside while you're doing your little actions and kind of making your choices today? Because if you're in rebellion with God, I think you're kind of like out under his protection. And you're kind of like out there having to take out your sword and shield of faith and helmet of salvation, put on your belt, you know, and put on your preparation gospel, shoes of peace. you got to run around, you know, kind of like doing all these things in order to keep yourself safe and duck in the fiery darts of Satan because you're going to go do one of these bob and weaves, you know, and you're kind of like, oh, ooh, man, the devil's out here, you know, I'm really out here fighting, you know, doing my battles and, you know, struggling and just really having a horrible time, you know, it's so tough and rough. Man, I'm having to, you know, chastise those, those, those false teachers and I'm having to go over here, you know, and like tell that person how wrong they are and I need to go back over here, you know, and it's like, man, I'm burning out here. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Jesus didn't tell you to do that. He said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. You can do whatever you want to do. If you want to go out there and play games, hey, there's lots of spiritual war games for you to go play in. Have fun. <laughs> there is an easier way. Enoch found it. Elijah found it. Elisha found it. Uh, Moses knew it, although he blew it. There's a lot easier way to go than what you know. Because if you're working it, I think you're missing it. But if you're choosing it, I think you won't lose it. Because you'll find that in God, every time, you can trust in the Lord with all your heart. You can turn to Him and let Him make your choices today. You can allow Him to direct you. And you know what? He likes to kind of like go, Hey, I've got a shortcut. It's called my way, not the highway. Ooh, that sounds cool. You think maybe we could like teleport, Lord? Like being caught up into the heavens and then drop back down? That'd be kind of neat. Don't be surprised. You may need to have your eyes opened up to what God can do in your day today because this is the day the Lord has made and He may want to take you someplace you've never been before. And when He does, Wow, you might be like Paul and say, Man, if I even began to tell you what happened to me, it would be a sin. It was so wonderful. I mean, I can't come up with a description of it. It's just too good. It's too awesome. Do you live life like that? Or are you busy with making choices? Choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the Lord, your God, choose Him if you would, or whether your own way, or whether the gods of men, or whether maybe even kind of a religious idea you have. I don't know, but I personally choose this day that the Lord has made to walk with Him and to find out what He made today for. Because He might have made the day for affliction, or He might have made the day for blessing, or He might have made the day for some other reason, like a lesson, but personally, it doesn't matter to me whether I go through trials, tribulations, the sunshine, and other rains falling, because it's the day the Lord has made, and I can rejoice because I choose to, by way of James saying, count it all joy. So if I'm in divers trials and tribulations, I count it all joy. If it's blessings, I count it all joy because it's easier. <laughs> I just enjoy it. Today's a day you choose to enjoy, if you want to. God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Blessed be God, 
even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulations, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Listen to your purpose. What are you doing? What should you be doing? Oh, God, you comfort us. Should we be comforting other people? Oh, it's such a deal. I got a deal for you. Blessed be God. Let's listen to this. Think about it. Listen to the words. Read them. I think it's in uh, 2 Corinthians 1, 3 to 5. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Yeah! For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. Now for a season it may be you are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. That's why you go through it, dude. The Lord stood with me and strengthened me. Let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to Him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. What day today is doesn't really matter. You don't thank God it's Friday. You thank God it's the day that the Lord has made and you can rejoice and be glad.